Hello there, meet the new lipstick formula that instantly landed a spot on my unofficial favourite matte lipsticks of all time list. I'll be swatching all eight shades of Merit Signature Lip Matte, comparing them to the Signature Lip Satin range, plus some other famous mattes you requested, and talking texture. It's time for a deep dive, and luckily for a matte, it's such a soft landing. I say it's an unofficial ranking of my all time favourite mattes because I've never made a video on them before, but I've mentioned them all countless times over the years, and will revisit them here and talk about where this new formula fits. Here's the whole family. Antibes, Classic, Sunday, Maison, Court, Vermilion, Power, and Equestrian. The full name on their beauty birth certificate is Signature Lip Lightweight Matte Lipstick. They sit alongside the existing Signature Lip Satins on Merit's website, so you know they're all meant to be light and easy to wear. The easiest way to tell the old satins and new mattes apart is the tube. The satins have a brownie, mahogany lid, and the mattes are in a charcoal grey. The mattes also have shade labels that match each lipstick shade, making them much easier to identify. You can hear me rave about the satins in many videos over the last two years because they're everything I could ever want in a sheer formula. Balmy, buildable, incredibly comfortable with a soft satin finish and such a light feel in eight everyday shades. If you're expecting the new Signature Lip mattes to be an exact match, just matte, not quite. They can be because they're so smooth and sheer out perfectly, but they're also much more powerful and pigmented. Eight enhanced saturated shades this time. So they're from the same laid back lip family, but the mattes are the richer, more dramatic, yet soft, very chic older sister. In terms of texture, this is one of the softest matte lipsticks I've ever tried. If the goal is a bullet that glides across the lips, this feels like it almost floats. That's how luxuriously smooth it feels. Not super silicone-y or slippy though, they last really well and keep feeling so comfy and weightless. That soft touch makes them perfect for blurred, softer looks. It's rare to find a formula that does both so intentionally and so well. Looks great at full strength, but also looks like it was made to be sheer. You can stop at one swipe and rub your lips together or soften with your fingertips. I even saw Merit suggesting their brush number two eyeshadow brush for application, diffusing color with the fluffier end or lining with the tiny end, but they never feel fussy and look perfect when you swipe and smudge or blot the bullet on. Some formula facts before we meet the shades, vegan, cruelty free, no noticeable fragrance, key ingredients, hyaluronic acid and sesame seed extract. These do not feel drying at all, but they don't feel specifically hydrating. Matte lipsticks never really do for me, so I'm still going to prep my lips with lip balm. Let's get swatching. Antibes is described as soft peach. Antibes is a city in the south of France, so picture terracotta tiled roofs and sun-drenched beach days. I'm very cool toned, so at full strength, it leans a bit orange, but would look great on warmer skin tones. When I shear it out, it's a nice sunburnt, easy peach. I have a feeling classic is going to be an instant classic. This is described as neutral, but it's a pinky, peachy, polished shade that makes you feel put together. In a gradient of eight wearable, tone it down or build it up colors, this feels like the ultimate easy to throw on shade. A name like Sunday might conjure up a no makeup makeup day, but this is a cheery pop of pink that brightens up the whole face, like a Sunday picnic in the park. A bolder pink than I personally go for, but the My Lips But Brighter sheared out version makes it more wearable than a full on fuchsia. Maison is the French word for house and also the French word for my favorite shade. It's called mauve by Sephora, berry mauve or rich mauve by Merit, and warmer, wearable, ready brownie berry by me. If you're expecting a cool mauve, I'm so sorry, but this relaxed sort of red is a beauty. Court is called warm brick, but it's definitely not your typical bricky terracotta. The summery brightness and coral kick make this color sing. One of my viewers, Mariah, said she recently took this shade to Mexico, and that's exactly where I want to pretend to be when I wear this. The word vermilion means bright red or vivid orange red, and that's what we have here. A warm red inspired by Merit's popular limited edition summer satin aperitif. They wanted to bring that back in a more pigmented way, so this is the same fiery red reimagined. Power is the cool red in the range, maybe named after the founder of Merit, Catherine Power, or named after how powerful it looks and makes you feel. The texture keeps the color approachable because you can soften it easily, but the cooler purpley berry tone will look stronger in lighter layers. 
Equestrian is a warm brown that's far more wearable than it might seem to some of you. It would be a gorgeous nude on deeper skin tones or deepen your lips in an effortlessly cool way, a 90s shade without any hint of being a flat, stark, lifeless brown. Shade comparisons in a second. I saw Amanda Z say these sit between a vibrant matte lipstick and a Glossier Generation G, and I agree. I'd put them right in the middle of more pigmented, creamy mattes I love and blotted, sheer, soft mattes I love. So let's run through some of them. Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution and Chanel Rouge Allure Velvet have long held the top two formula spots in my mind when it comes to creamy matte lipsticks. Great pigment, rich color, but never drying. I've loved them both for maybe 10 years at this point. I'd also put Rouge Dior mattes up there. They tick similar, creamy, comfortable, but high impact boxes, as well as Lisa Eldridge's True Velvets. Such intense pigment in beautifully nuanced shades, but this one does eventually feel a touch dry on me if I'm not using lip balm layers in between. To me, Merit feels even softer on the lips than all of the above. Then we jump to more laid back, soft mattes like my beloved Bobbi Brown Crush Lip Colors. I will not go anywhere without a tube of this low maintenance, barely there texture, blotted straight from the bullet or buildable. One or two swipes of Crushed and Merit might look similar, but Merit can layer to pack way more of a punch and feels creamier. Then there's Glossier Generation G, which delivers a flush of low key color with a weightless feel. Merit feels far more silky, and Generation G doesn't have the same smooth glide or potential to build the color. Violette FR Bizu Balm could be in this conversation too, and while I love the just bitten, blurred, velvety color, it's much lower impact and feels slightly powdery on the lips. No trace of that with Merit. Another sheer matte that came to mind was the stunning Givenchy Le Rouge Sheer Velvets, like a more luxurious cousin of crushed lip color. These have a soft focus, diffused finish, and interestingly, the velvety soft feel during application is closest to merit, but then they can't reach the same full pigment finished product. So Signature Lip really is a great midpoint between the characteristics of richer, classic, creamy mattes and lighter, blurred look soft mattes. Merit currently sells a box set capsule, really nice mixture of four shades, Antibes, Classic, Maison and Power. And speaking of sets, this month I was so excited to curate my own Merit bundles. So I'll leave my Matilda's favorites and essential sets linked below, all of my go-to Merit formulas or a few of my top picks, including Signature Lip Satin or Matte at a discount. Let's bring in the satin shades to find some potential matte matches. I'll share a sheer and stronger swatch of each. Here's Antibes next to Slip, a neutral slash warm beige. The toastier tones in Antibes stand out a fraction more. Next, Classic with Millennial and Baby, the soft pink sisters. Millennial is a slightly brighter, cooler pink, then Baby is more muted. Stronger pinks, Sunday with Fashion, which is a purpley berry satin, still vibrant, but not as warm as the pop of Sunday pink. My favorites, Maison with Lavenue, a berry brown satin, definitely related, same color mood. Lavenue is just a little less rosy. Bringing in the bricks, Caught with Tiger, the brick red satin that's looking brown next to bright coralish Caught, and Carbo is a warmer red orange. The reds, Vermilion and Aperitif, you can certainly see the resemblance between those two, whereas Matte Power is clearly cooler. And Equestrian and 1990 for a 90s vibe. Next to cooler 1990, Equestrian suddenly looks like a delicious warm milk chocolate. Finally, some quick Charlotte Tilbury comparisons as requested. How does Maison compare to two of my most loved Charlotte shades, Bond Girl and Walk of No Shame? Brownie Red Bond Girl slash MI Kiss is close, folks. My eyes almost play tricks on me looking at these for too long. You could barely tell, but Bond Girl has a tiny bit more brown, maybe? Then Berry Rose Walk of No Shame is more berry and rose in comparison. I'd also like to add Viva La Vergara into the mix, another red berry wine. I just want to be adopted by this family. They're so lovely. A couple of you wanted to see classic next to Pillow Talk, so your rosy wish is my command. Pillow Talk is usually called nude pink, but I think of it as a dustier, almost malted pink. That dustiness is a little more evident next to classic. Also worth seeing it with Wedding Bells, which struck me as even closer. Such an underrated, peachy, rosebud pick. 
What are your thoughts on Signature Lip Matte? Did you race to try the new formula? Already have something similar at home or feel happy to stick to the sheer satins? Some people were disappointed the shade range leans quite warm, so I'd love to hear any additional colours you'd like to see in future. And please leave your own unofficial matte lipstick rankings or your favourite soft mattes in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.